If you have hydraulic lifters, <clears throat> all you need to do is set a little bit of preload into those lifters and you probably never have to worry about them again. That's why a lot of engines with hydraulic lifters don't even have an adjustable valve train. You can't adjust the rocker arm, you just bolt it all down and you're good to go. Now, Sunbeam Alpines do not have hydraulic lifters. None of them. They've all got solid lifters. All right. So if you've got a solid lifter camshaft, that means you've got no hydraulic cushion for the push rod. So all of your push rods need to be adjusted individually and that adjustment is called valve lash. All right, to adjust your valve lash, you use a feeler gauge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust mine cold. I just had the rocker shaft off to retort the cylinder head. So now I put the rocker shaft back on. I've got to adjust my cold valve lash before I can run the engine, get it warm, and then do the hot valve lash adjustment. All right, so the common consensus right now on the uh, Alpine forums is 10 thousandths on the intake valve for valve lash and 12 thousandths on the exhaust valve. You need more clearance on the exhaust valve because the exhaust valve gets hotter and heat is what we're talking about because heat causes expansion. So everything's going to expand. These long push rods are going to expand. Everything's going to expand with heat. Even that aluminum cylinder head is going to expand. So it's a little bit tricky, which is why with this engine you really can't get away with just doing a cold valve lash adjustment. You've got to do the cold initially get it running nice and hot, go down the road, get it going 60 miles an hour, come back home, get that valve cover off, and then do the, uh, the hot adjustment. Now the cold adjustment, there's no rush, you know, because it's not cooling off as we speak, it's already nice and cold. So my cold adjustment, I'm going to go 15 thousandths on the intake side, and I'm going to go 17 thousandths on the exhaust. So I'm going to go 15 and 17 cold, and then I'm going to go 10 thousandths and 12 thousandths hot which seems to be the common consensus now is 10 thousandths and 12 thousandths uh, is what people are needing to do because these engines are, are getting so old. I think the original spec was 12 thousandths and 14 thousandths. 12 for the intake and uh, 14 for the exhaust. But uh, this is a noisy engine. Um, flat tappet cams, which means solid lifters, they, uh, they, they tend to make noise because of that slight gap you got in there. But if you can get that gap to where it comes down to just about zero when it's hot, um, then hopefully it'll be less noisy. So that's the goal we're working towards right now. So to start off, what you want to do is you want to be able to turn your crankshaft because some of these valves are open right now. Like this valve is open and this valve is closed. And that one's got a little bit of load on it, and that one doesn't. And that one doesn't. And that one's got a load on it, so that valve is being opened. And that one's got nothing. And that one's got a little bit. So you want it completely off the cam load before you adjust it. All right? So what you need... Oh, and I should point out, this is an intake valve. And you know it's an intake valve. You've got your valve spring right here holding your valve in the up position and your rocker arm pushes the valve down into the open position. You know this is an intake because it's lined up with your intake manifold. And then here you've got your intake manifold port. So that's an intake valve. And that one, so that's an intake valve. And this one, so that's an intake valve. Easy. So then these guys on the end are exhaust valves. And these two right here are also exhaust valves. So you got two intakes in the center, and then you got an intake here, an intake here, and the other ones are your exhaust valves. So what I'm going to do is I've already found a 15 thousandths feeler gauge, and I'm going to do all of my intakes first, setting them to 15 cold. And then I'm going to do all my exhaust, setting them to 17 cold. All right, so I can't set this intake now because it's being held open. It's got pressure on it from the rocker arm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the crankshaft until this exhaust valve starts to open. Because when this exhaust valve starts to open, it means this is going to be fully closed. And when this intake starts to open, it means the exhaust is going to be fully closed. And fully closed is when I want to set my adjustment.
I'm just going to worry about these two right now. I'm not even going to look at this or this or these two. So you got pairs here, right? You got exhaust and intake, exhaust and intake, intake and exhaust, intake and exhaust. So right now I'm just worried about these two, and I want to get to this intake. So you need a way to turn the crankshaft. You can either put a socket on your crank bolt and turn the crankshaft that way, or if your Alpine still has the means to do a crank start, you can do it with your with your crank. And as I'm cranking the engine, I'm watching the rocker arms, and as soon as that exhaust opens, I can adjust my intake. So it's open right now. I just realized if I'm turning the crank handle with my right hand and I'm holding the camera with my left hand, I can see the push rods going up and down. I can see the rocker arms going up and down. And I can see the valves going up and down. But you can't in the video because my left hand is going up and down. So let me try this again just for the sake of showing you how easy it is to see which valve is up and which valve is down so you know which one you can adjust. So here I go, I'm going to turn the crank. Alright, I'm going to put it in neutral. And now I'm going to turn the crank. So hopefully you saw that, and it's pretty obvious which ones are up and which ones are down. I'll just come around again to show you. Right there. It's just starting to open, okay? So if my exhaust valve is just starting to open, like it is, then this valve is closed. So, this is the intake that we're going to set to 15. And this is the locking mechanism. It's got a jam nut and an adjuster screw. So we loosen that jam nut. that. And then we take our feeler gauge and we put it in like that. And then we tighten our adjuster screw until this is snug. Doesn't have to be smoked, but it should be snug. Okay, that's a little bit more than snug. Let me back that off just a little bit. That's good. That's nice and snug right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this adjuster screw st straight right there so it doesn't move. Because if that screw moves, if the screwdriver tw turns, then I lose my adjustment. Alright? While I'm holding this, I'm going to lock the nut down with that. Let's see. There, that one's locked down. So, that is one that is now adjusted. That is my correct lash. And all lash refers to is the gap between the rocker arm and the top of the valve. And the top of the valve is right there where the rocker arm is connecting right where I have the feeler gauge in there. So now, all I need to do is I'll turn the crankshaft 
until this exhaust valve just starts to open and then I'll set this one to 15 and then I'll set it I'll turn the crank until this exhaust valve starts to open and I'll adjust this intake to 15 and then I'll set it to I'll turn the crankshaft until this one on the end starts to open I'll adjust this intake to 15 and then all my intakes will be set and locked down at 15 thousandths of an inch and then I'll do the same for the exhaust I'll just turn the crank until this intake starts to open and I'll adjust my exhaust to 17 and uh, the same for all the others I'll open up all the intakes one at a time and uh, and I'll adjust some people try to get fancy and they're like well if this one's open then that one's good and I can do this one and this one at the same time I don't do that I just go down the line methodically and uh, and I always work in pairs. And uh, I'm going to set all the intakes to 15 and all the exhaust to 17. Again, the exhaust needs more gap because the exhaust gets hotter, so more expansion. You need the gap for the expansion. And uh, then I'll take it down the road after my cold valve lash is set. And, uh, and then I'll adjust the valves once the engine is nice and hot. And when I do that, it'll be, uh, you know, I have to do it a lot quicker. I won't be making a video of that. But that's how you do it. That's how you adjust valves. It's easy as getting a feeler gauge in there and then adjusting your set screw here and then locking it down with the lock nut. It's definitely better than it was. So now that the engine's nice and warmed up, I've been driving it around and I'm up to operating temperature 190. Now I'll shut it off and I'll pull that valve cover and uh, adjust the, uh, the hot valve lash exactly the same as I adjusted the cold valve lash except now that the engine's hot and everything's expanded the operating temperature instead of going 15 on the intake and 17 on the exhaust I'm going to go 10 on the intake and 12 on the exhaust and uh, we'll see if that makes it better or if it makes it worse if it makes it worse you just shut it off again pull the valve cover and keep trying until you get it quiet you don't want to take too much lash away though because then your valve doesn't fully close and that would be a bad situation if you're running an engine where the valve doesn't fully close. I've got a few things ready now. I've got my uh, half tear to cover the carburetor when I take the air cleaner off. I've got a screwdriver for adjusting the uh, set screw that sets the valve lash. I've got a 7 16th nut driver take the nuts off, the four nuts to secure the valve cover. I've got my half inch box in to lock down the uh, rocker arm adjustment. And i got my feeler gauge set to 10,000, which is what I'm going to use on the intake side. I'm going to do all the intakes to 10, and I'm going to switch to a 12,000 feeler gauge, and I'm going to do all the exhaust. I've also got my um, crank handle right there, so I can turn the engine over and open one valve. When one valve is open, I can adjust the one right next to it, going in pairs, two and two and two and two. And uh, just in case, I've got a hammer and a little stubby screwdriver that I can put right there in case the uh, valve cover needs a piece of mat to get it loosened up. Just put that bolt right in there and then just back it right there. That'll loosen up the valve cover without damaging the, uh, the gas underneath there. And uh, that's it. I've got everything I need so I can shut the engine down and try to get everything adjusted before things cool off too much. All right, and done. I did all the intakes to 10 thousandths. I did all the exhaust to 12 thousandths. This is the last one. I just adjusted it. I got it all done before the engine cooled off too much. This engine's still very hot to the touch. That's about as long as I can hold on to that rocker arm. So I think I'm good. Um, the good news is the cold valve lash adjustment definitely put me in the ballpark when I set it cold to 15 and 17. I might have even gotten away with 14 and 16 cold, but I went with 15 and 17 just to play it safe. Um, it was consistent front to back all the intakes and all the exhausts were consistent each one needed about a quarter turn tightened to get the adjustment right so this one I made note of the screwdriver went from like right there to 
to right there, which is like a quarter turn. So not much at all, a quarter turn tighter on each one, and that got me the 10 thousandths on the intake and the 12 thousandths on the exhaust hot. And uh, the other thing is, this isn't my first engine with a solid cam. I had a 70 Mach 1 with a 351 Cleveland that I raced with a solid cam. So I'm not new to adjusting valves, but um, I used to adjust those valves 17 thousandths cold, and, and that was just it, you know, I'd done. Um, but uh, I always used a feeler gauge like this one. And I noticed on the forums they're saying use a wire instead of a feel ga feeler gauge. And I've seen wires for gapping spark plugs that are like, you know, 30 thousandths, 35 thousandths, whatever thickness. I've never seen a wire uh, gauge in a 10 thousandths or a 12 thousandths size. Um, but I'm open to new ideas. So if someone can point me where to, in the right direction to buy something like that, I Googled it and I couldn't find one for sale. But just to put things in perspective, this is 32 thousandths safety wire right here. That's 32 thousandths. And this is 20 thousandths safety wire. And 20 thousandths safety wire is very thin. So you're talking about half the thickness of 20 thousandths wire. So I'm thinking 10 thousandths wire. I'd like to see it. I've never seen it before, but it's going to be very thin. So until someone can point me towards that, uh, that wire 10 thousandths gauge, this is what I'm using. This is the 12 thousandths gauge, and right next to it is the 10 thousandths gauge. Like I said, I, I set the uh, hot valve lash to 10 thousandths on the intake side and 12 thousandths on the exhaust side. And the exhaust needs more of a gap because the exhaust gets hotter, therefore more heat expansion. And that gap is to allow for, for heat expansion so that you're as close to zero as possible when the engine is running without going too far to where the valve never closes. So now I've got just a little bit of gap. Twelve thousandths on the exhaust, ten thousandths on the intake. Now I'll put the valve cover back on, fire it up, and see how it runs. I think it'll be fine though. I don't think I made anything worse. It was consistent across the board and how much more tightening it needed. So I think this was a success. All right. Oh. Ignition on. Neutral. Oh, that sounds real nice. <laughs> 